the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a great little gospel passage uh, for us the, the first week of Lent because it uh, focuses us in on uh, what we are supposed to be doing and uh, gives us some sense of, of the power that is at work in us uh, to achieve Lent's objectives, yeah? And we see this here in the, uh, somewhat toward the beginning of uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, uh, that kind of central point of his teaching, where he is calling us to himself to be God's renewed people, who can then be about renewing his entire creation. And if we see, if we see his instructions here as to uh, what it means to be his renewed people and his renewing people, right? The people that renew the world. Then we can see come to the surface here the idea that everything we do is meant to be animated by what? By charity, by love. Yeah, the challenge here, Jesus is, is saying, he's, st he's stepping in and saying, okay, so someone has, someone's done something wrong against you. What's, you, what's your response going to be? Okay, granted, because you're law-abiding people, you're not going to kill that person. But the standards of God go way beyond that because God has called the people to himself to, to image his love, to bring his love into the world, to bring the life of heaven to earth. So it's not so simple as, say, having a little bit more self-restraint so that, oh, we're not, it's not only that we're not likely to kill that person, maybe we won't hit them, maybe we won't um, think of them so badly. No, in fact, what Jesus is saying to us is our whole being has to be, um, uh, ha love has to flow through our entire being. It has, to, it has to flush out of us everything that is not love. And so even in these very difficult circumstances that Jesus puts forward to us, he is showing us the, uh, the primacy of love. We have to choose to love in every, uh, in every instant, in every, in every possible opportunity, in every possible moment there is. Even where we have opposition coming at us, even when we find ourselves in real difficulty, we have, we have to choose love. Even when the people around us are not choosing love, we have to choose love. Right? Even when the people around us are choosing to do bad things, what do we, what do we have to choose? We have to choose love. Yeah, we have to choose what God, what God wants us to do. We need to be reflections of, of his mercy and his charity. Now, the beautiful thing is that, of course, Jesus' entire life is animated by charity. This is not something simply that he commands us to do. This is a way that he has pioneered himself, and he now makes it possible for us as well. Right? In Jesus' life, in fact, we see his, whole, his entire life is animated by, by charity. He goes to the death 
for the sake of love and out of love. And what happens? He rises from the dead. He rises from the dead. Why? Because in the end, my friends, love is stronger even than death. Even than death. So when we commit ourselves to the way of charity and we have Jesus' own life of love at work in us and working through us, then we can conquer everything in charity and with charity if we but allow God to conquer the hardness of our hearts so that we can be a people of love, a renewed people, and get about the authentic, the true renewal of the entire world. It's going to happen by love. It's not going to happen any other way. And we've been called to that great task, that great and ennobling task today, and we commit ourselves to it because we commit ourselves to God today at the altar and what He, and what he wants for us. We pledge to live to His plan and His purposes, and we will give ourselves then entirely in the cause of love as He sustains us with His flesh and blood, which is nothing other than love itself made our food today uh, to keep us going along his way.